Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for February 4th, 2022. So hopefully everybody is doing well today. I haven't been here for about three weeks. I had uh, actually had Corona for two and a half weeks. It was a great vacation. Just chilled, slept, chilled. Yep. So anyway, good to be back. Um, gosh, for us up here in the northern hemisphere, it's only like, what, 40 some more days till spring. Yay. All right. So it looks like we have some people who are living in all spring weather. Hello from Albuquerque. Um, so again, if you are new here, um, please do put your questions in the questions tab. And otherwise, please do feel free to chat with everybody who is here today. Um, and hello, everybody. Thank you all for being here and hanging out with us today. All right, so we will begin as we always begin by going into the heart space. So close your eyes if you wish, putting your attention onto the physical heart, taking a deep breath in from the heart, from the earth. So you're just drawing in that unconditional loving, supporting light of the earth, heart to heart, breathing in that light into your heart. Then we connect heart to heart with creation, breathing in that light of creation, source, soul, creator, God into the heart. And that third breath is breathing in from the earth, from creation, just becoming a column of light that's grounded, connected, and in the heart space. And then we just hold space for everybody who's watching live, as well as everybody who will be participating later. Um, we just hold a container of space that is helpful, beneficial, beautiful space. Thank you all for participating. All right, so here we go. We'll start with uh, questions. And actually, I don't have any questions from email, so you guys will have to drop some questions here in the questions tab. Um, let's see, and then I'll have some announcements later, and we'll probably do a meditation at the end of our at the end of our um, space here. Okay, so I have a question from Melissa. If you add a generic Genesa tensor generator on a quantum pyramid grid point, does it broadcast the quantum pyramid energy? So, yeah, yes. Um, all of the tensor field generators that we make here at Twisted Sage Studios are in that higher vibration space. They're, they're all the harmony and beyond. Um, so we don't use like any of the older, you know, frequency of, of tools. And so anything that comes from Twisted Say Studios that you add onto there will broadcast that energetics of the quantum grid point. Um, and I feel like if you took like a 144 megahertz tensor field generator, one of the older ones from, you know, a decade ago, um, it feels like it will broadcast the majority of those energetics, but it just still kind of feels like some will be lost in that broadcast because that field just is not, you know, that really high field that the quantum grid point is. So it'll still broadcast a bit of that energy and information, but just not the full spectrum of energy and information. Um, and I'd almost say that is true with a harmony generator too. With a harmony generator on a quantum grid point, it appears that you'll still broadcast the majority of the energy and information that comes out of that grid point. Um, Brennan, hello, I'm new to Twisted Sage. In my home, we're having a problem with disincarnates and entities, and I'm trying to find a way to keep the house clear going forward. What product do you suggest? Um, anything in the golden fire so basically like the golden fire generator is is a great one because the golden fire generator has a sphere of influence of about two and a half miles 
And it is bringing through that energetics of the golden fire, anybody or anything that comes into that field. It gives the reminder that sacred heart. So if you have a disincarnate being, a ghost or a wayward, basically when they come into that field of that golden fire generator, the soul comes in to activate the sacred heart and just takes them home. Um, so, and that's as far as any other beings who are not in this field physical density basically it is holding a high vibration space so either they resonate with those vibrations so they are in more of a heart based you know style of being higher frequency vibration higher consciousness or else if that being is not higher consciousness heart based it won't like being in that field and it will just stay out of that field so um yeah the golden fire generator is one that i would suggest um you know, most of our tools will assist in crossing over ghost waywards. Um, one of the biggest things that we do for like our ghost busting, um, we did a ghost busting webinar here back in October. So if you want to look back on our 50 questions Fridays on their YouTube, um, we do have that ghost busting webinar. And um, basically, we didn't use any tools in the webinar. We actually just did the consciousness work of anchoring columns of light and that will cross them over as well so um yeah i'd say check back on the youtube page and check out that ghost busting um video that we did the webinar and that will walk you through a lot of different ways to work with them otherwise the golden fire generators what i would suggest for clearing them let's see nika is there a protocol for removing portals with the on the wings of talk or does it just dismantle and clear them automatically so with with portals um portal vortexes so portals are always found at the intersecting of geomagnetic lines that create a vortex of energy so that vortex of energy is where you will find these portals now some portals are a beneficial uh doorway and with all beneficial portals all beneficial doorways there is a guardian of that portal and it is always in the highest and best. And it just ensures that, you know, it is only used for the highest and best, this portal vortex. So some portal vortexes are actually beneficial. Um, for the ones that are non-beneficial and you bring in the wings of talk and um, that wings of talk is just going to ensure that either that portal is closed if it is non-beneficial or else it will um, basically hold the space to ensure that it is only used in the highest and best. Um, so the, the wings of talk pretty much will do it automatically. Um, if you still are finding that there are issues coming through, then you just basically would do the exercise that you would do with the wings of talk, which is just simply going into the heart space, putting your awareness onto that portal vortex imagining that wings of talk sitting right on top of that portal vortex and that it's just doing the work you know there there's a column of light that comes in through there and again um you know the the wings of talk is 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 a pretty phenomenal um tool for clearing portal vortexes it was um because it is connecting into the geopathic geomagnetic lines that create vortexes in the first place um so yeah simple easy just be in the heart space have your intentions with it uh, let's see another question what would work best to use for plants growing in a greenhouse i would suggest the seven inch harmony generator now the harmony tensor field generators are the ones that are connecting more with the plant kingdom the earth kingdom the earth elementals all of that support system um you know, so the harmony generators are one that, you know, and again, I would suggest the seven inch one, the three and a half inch one still has a sphere of influence about five and a half miles. The seven inch one is, it's just more tangible um, in, in the physical realm for the energetics that it puts out. It's just a little bit heavier gauge, a little bit larger sphere. Uh, so that seven inch harmony generator is um, one that's also programmable. You can put your intentions into there. Um, you know, people have used it in commercial agriculture from everything from um, broadcasting to keep pests away uh, to working with the soil to working with the consciousness of the plants. Um, 
So the the harmony generator is is definitely a good one for the greenhouse. Now, if you are into doing energy work, I would suggest using a wisdom wand to put a column of light in that space. Now, when we move into these higher energetics, these higher frequencies of like the wisdom wand, um, the in the wisdom ring energetics. Now, these are doing amazing things for plants. They are allowing a plant to basically repattern, repattern the energy fields around the plant to why it can start to draw in more nutrients. Um, it'll take anything that is GMO and allow it to change its DNA back to its original. Um, so working with the wisdom energetics and we don't have a wisdom generator yet or else that is what I was suggested for, for using the greenhouse. But the harmony generator is fantastic. Um, if you have a, you know, like a mother plant or, you know, some very specialty plants, you could almost just get a wisdom ring and put underneath of the pot. Um, you know, if you have a few special plants that you that you really want to bolster, then using a single ring like the wisdom ring so that the plant is within that column of light that the ring produces is is another way that you can utilize the tools for the greenhouses, as well as doing the columns of light like with the wisdom wand. Um, so you do have a, you know, a few different choices and options and you can use them all and overlap them all. So hopefully that helps there. Uh, let's see. Renard, could we use a harmony ring with single plants? And yes, you can totally use that harmony ring. Um, the harmony rings are still fantastic for the plants. Now, the only difference in going into that wisdom ring is that wisdom ring is bringing plants to an even higher aspect of their being. And it is holding space for them to repattern energy. So basically with plants, we're, we're being shown that it's doing some pretty amazing, amazing things for, for plants. Um, so, you know, if you can use that wisdom energetics for plants, that's definitely what I would suggest. Um, JR, what about a tool for helping an ailing house tree? Um, gosh. You know, and again, for plants, a lot of times what we'll do for, for a plant, you know, like if we're working on a very specific plant that we really want to help, having a larger ring around the base of the pot or even um, in the pot, you know, on the soil itself. Now, depending on how, you know, you can get too much copper. Well, I don't know if you can get too much copper. You may get too much copper. I don't know, depending on your plant and how much leaches into the soil. But for us, we usually put a small ring directly on top of the soil on most all of our plants. Um, but if you're working on that one tree, JR, um, in a home, that's what I would suggest is to get a ring large enough to fit around the base of that pot. And, and you don't even really have to have a ring that goes around the base. Even if you just had a small wisdom ring that you set directly in there on, on the soil, that's going to assist as well. Um, so you don't necessarily have to have a ring that will encompass the whole tree, but if you can, it's that much better. But even these smaller fields is going to assist greatly. Um, Wonderful. And you do have a wisdom ring, JR. So I look forward to hearing back if you notice anything over the next few months. Hey, Joy. You want to take my car? Oh, my goodness. My daughter's 11 years old. And I'm giving her my car key. Here you go. Thanks. You're welcome. Wait, you got to come back and get me later. Okay. I'm making waffles for Cora. Awesome. So yeah, we're really lucky to live in this tiny little town here because 11 years old, she can just go cruise across town. <laughs> Fun stuff. All right. Um, Brennan, additionally, is there any product you recommend for removing attachments, entities, disincarnates from yourself or others, in this case, family? We currently have a bit of a house infestation. 
So any of the pendants, um, any more, any of the pendants that we have are going to keep disincarnates from sticking to your field. Um, and again, you can just use that generator to cover that whole house. Um, and actually, you know, if you, if there's that big of an issue there, then I would almost suggest getting the on the wings of talk is, is, is probably a better suggestion because if you have that many disincarnates there, there's probably either a port of vortex there that they're getting trapped in or geomagnetic lines because ghost waywards have to take energy from people or places in order to survive in that plane. So geomagnetic lines contain energy. So when you see ghost waywards as they traverse across the landscape, they are following geomagnetic lines. And so when we find that there are homes and spaces that have an abnormal number of waywards there, it is usually because of those geomagnetic lines or else that entire vortex that has them held there. So if you are needing to work with those geomagnetic lines, um, the wings of talk, the on the wings of talk would be the tool that I would suggest for, you know, any of those hardcore spaces like that. Um, because it is going to work with the geomagnetic lines. And of course, it's going to work with crossing over the ghost waywards. And if there's portal vortexes, then that tool will take care of that. Where the golden fire generators don't really take care of the portal vortexes as much. They'll keep the space clear. But to get to the root of the problem, you know, I'd almost say that on the wings of talk might actually be a better option for you there. Um, and then... So again, once you have something in an environmental tool, whether it's a generator or the on the wings of talk, that'll take care of everybody in the field. Um, but if one particular person is sensitive where they go out away from the tools, you might want to wear a pendant, um, you know, because especially once you start working with ghost sway words, they know that you can see them and recognize them. They're always going to keep coming. So, um, you know, just wearing a pendant as you're out and about, It'll take care of them. All right. Uh, Mika, two-part question. Have you ever heard of a Kriya Yoga bangle or astro astrological bangle? They've been used in India for a long time. They're similar to tensor rings, three metals, gold, silver, copper, twisted together, using a specific weight of each. You know, I have seen um, some of those traditional bangles, and yeah, they, they really do look like tensor rings. <clears throat> um, and yeah, it, 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 it's pretty interesting. So yeah, those are beautiful with the, uh, the gold, silver, and copper in them. Um, let's see, just double checking a question here. Um, but yeah, that's definitely something that we've considered with our new press machine for making um, the C-shaped bangles is we're certainly considering working with, you know, three metals, but we just have not taken the time to squish any gold yet. Um, so Mika goes on, they are used to block negative astrological influences. Do you think it would be possible to make a similar item without the gold or with gold plating, but carrying the same frequency of the originals? Um, so if you're looking for a tool to block negative astrological influences, um, in all actuality, the tools can hold space, be something for your attention and intention, because, um, you know, basically with anything like astrological um, influences, with any kind of influences that are outside of your being, you do not have to agree to take on those influences. You can be like, nope, not for me. That's what I've done with astrological influences is, um, you know, I was pretty, pretty into it for a few years, the astrological stuff. And finally one day I was like, no, uh, -uh. I, I, no. And, and so, yeah, I, I just said no. Um, and you know, it's getting to the point that we are such powerful beings and the more that we realize it and the more that we can step into our alignment, slough off all the crap, 
the less we agree to outside influences. It's really, truly, there is no outside influence on each and every one of us. We can choose that creation, but um, we don't have to choose that creation. Um, let's see. So going to jump over here to chat for a minute to see what's happening. From Maine, California, Minnesota, California, North Carolina, North Idaho. Yay, beautiful country up there. Um, yay. Sorry, just reading the chat here, you guys. So for those of you who are watching afterwards, you just don't get up get to see the chat stuff. Um, and actually, if you go to the live storm page, you can still see the chat and the questions mm -hmm. after the fact. But on the YouTube, um, obviously, you can't see the chat. Uh, Nika, can we anchor in the energetics of the tools to places? Can we anchor those energetics into person or people? So not all energetics can you anchor that column of energy in now there is the the wands um such as the golden fire and light wand the um the wisdom wands and the wings of talk including the wings of talk pendant and the on the wings of talk are the tools that you can use to anchor in Basically, they're anchoring a column of light that's connected to the earth, connected to creation. Um, your soul is the one who is basically holding the space for that light to stay there, as well as with the earth and creation. So it's kind of like um, it's, a, it's a group project of holding those columns of light there. Now, you, if you go to try to, let's say, take this wisdom ring, and it creates a column of light just like this. And you go to try to anchor that column of light in. You can anchor in those energetics, um, but it's not really using the tool. It is, if you go to our light anchoring work, uh, video that we did, basically, um, when you anchor in a column of light, the way that we do it with the golden fire and light wands or with the wisdom wands, that column will stay there indefinitely if needed. Um, you don't have to put your attention to it. But for other tools, like let's say a wisdom ring, you can anchor that column of light there and bring the energetics, but um, it, it's not going to hold like the other tools that we just discussed will hold a column of light. Um, if you make a column of light with this ring and just imagine this ring is producing a column of light is connected to earth and creation. Um, it's going to dissipate out in like a week. You have to keep putting your attention there to hold those specific tools in place, those energies in place. Cause basically you're just creating a column of light. Um, but again, to, to anchor in the energetics of the other tools that we discussed, um, that's all fairly easy. Those columns of light will stay there indefinitely if needed. Uh, let's see, question. I know that tensor tools transmute harmful EMFs. Does it also transmute harmful sun rays, UV? So yes basically the tensor fields are going to harmonize all energies that are within that bandwidth of that tensor ring so within all the tensor rings that we create they have a huge bandwidth of energetics um, everything from the physical and lower dimensions all the way through all the dimensional layers that we as a soul exist on so the bandwidth that our particular rings are are working with um, that harmonize energies that bandwidth is huge so yes that bandwidth will harmonize the energies of um of anything that comes through um so the sun it's you know electromagnetic um it's going to harmonize those rays as well so 
So yeah, if you have um, if you have a tensor field generator or you're wearing a pendant, your field or your area is going to be harmonized and clear with the sun rays and with all energetics. Right. Oh, Amika. Found a cool use for two tensor rings. I have the I have the over the entire ear stereo headphones and the bigger over three inch wisdom rings fit perfectly inside the earpieces. So your music's harmonized. Been using it with the Tom Kenyon stuff. That's fantastic, Mika. Yeah, because when you um when you run sound through the rings, it it changes the energetics. Um and so that's that's pretty fantastic using it in your headphones. Let's see, Renard. I've can I've combined the xenon and krypton bulbs with the wisdom ring, and wow, any insight with noble gases and tensor fields? No, that's pretty fantastic, Renard. Using um, you know those specialized bulbs with the wisdom rings, and no, really have not played with that. I'm kind of curious of what the xenon and krypton bulbs are with the noble gases. Um, all right. So let's see here. Just double checking that I've caught up here with everything. All right. So, um, Yeah, comment on that sun UV thing. Well, yeah, I'm don't know what to say too much about the the rings and the tools harmonizing fields because it's kind of one of those things that I, you know, I'm so much in the belief set right now that there's nothing outside of you. Everything is your energy. And you can choose whether that is a harmful energy or whether it's not Um, electromagnetics you can choose whether the cell phone's bad for you and you need a cell phone tab on it or not you can choose whether that cell phone tower is causing all kinds of disruptions in your field or it's not you can choose whether astrological has influences or not um you know, I just really, truly believe that we can um, make that UV, UV ray harmful to us, you know, um, just by our intents, our beliefs, our allowances um, that, you know, that UV ray could be harmful, that anything could be harmful. I don't know. It's quite the quite the different way of looking at things right now still trying to recalibrate and reset my take on reality because um there's amazing things happening right now and it's all about dissolving limitations um before we can step into you know actually witnessing those amazing things um and that's the beautiful thing about the tools and the exercise that we'll do here in a moment uh, what might happen if a tool is dropped into a body of water? Would there be different tools applied to flowing water, such as rivers and streams versus lakes? What about large lakes like Lake Superior? So when you drop um, with water, water is a beautiful communicative um, medium. It's basically if you are, if you take a small ring and you are, right underneath your water bottle. Let's say we're putting it under there just like this. And it's not harmonizing just that water that's right within the column of the ring. It's harmonizing that water within the column, but it is also the water is communicating with the rest of the water in the entire container. And so as the water within this column, it spreads. So that's why we, you know, the whole concept that you don't need a tensor ring, um, you know, a small size can can charge, can restructure like a 20-gallon 
barrel of water or a 50 gallon barrel of water. Um, it doesn't have to encompass that entire body of water within the column of light. Um, so if you're using the tools, like let's say this ring right here, I'm seeing like if you threw this like out in one of the Great Lakes, it would create a space around this that is, you know, I see it as just like this beautiful golden light. Let's say it, it's like it creates, it's almost like a bubble around there. And then it just kind of dissipates out is what that looks like to me. So it looks like to me that like if you throw this into a lake that is going to cover, you know, about a hundred foot wide area is, is how it presents to me. Now that will eventually trickle out, um, you know, and intermix with all the other waters within that body. But if you're using it in a river, that's where I love to anchor columns of light, or you can throw the tools in, um, into rivers because then that energetics is going to be carried, you know, for as for quite a ways down the river until it intermingles with other water. And then, you know, it's kind of like you got water here that has all this stored memory and crap and stuff. And then it comes into contact with this water. It kind of, you know, comes in and, and averages them out, you know, so to speak. Uh, let's see. Can you talk a little bit more about instantly changing water using the wisdom water rings or the wisdom wand? Yes. So basically, you can, if you take the, um, gosh, I don't have a set of them here, but if you take um, a set of the alchemist rings, now the alchemist rings are the ones that you use to change water instantly, is the alchemist set. So with the alchemist set, um, actually right here is an alchemist set. This is a little prototype thing. The triquatra that has the alchemist rings in it and in the center is the wisdom. So when we use these particular alchemists, when we use an alchemist set with the water, basically you need to go through, you can set your water right within that ring and it's going to still charge your water within, you know, and physically restructure it within two hours within two hours you'll have your water physically restructured when you just put it within the alchemist rings but to bring in the consciousness of water through that alchemist set when you bring in that consciousness of water into the water itself that is when water is physically restructured instantly so it takes your attention with it um, you have to hold the space. You have to hold the space for the consciousness of water to come in and permeate the water. I believe it was December 3rd that we did the Water Wisdom Alchemist um, webinar. I'm pretty sure it was the December 3rd one where we did that attunement and activation um, with the Alchemist set with the water wisdom so that we could bring that water that energetics of the water through to physically restructure the water instantly so um and you can do the same with the wand and in all actuality with the wand all you have to do is run the energy into the water and it's your intention but you still have to go through and do that december 3rd activation attunement and you only have to do it one time and then you are basically attuned to that consciousness of the water so then when you go to run your energy um, into the water you're having the intention of bringing through that consciousness of water into the physical to restructure it instantly so um, once you are attuned to that energetics make it simple it does not have to be complicated or hard it can just be simply you're attuned to it you run the energy into your water done that's it um, keep it as simple as you can for sure all right
Yep. So, yeah, the physical being um, and the things outside of us that affect us. Um, I don't know. We're pretty powerful creators and we are stepping higher and higher into consciousness. And um, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to come in these next few years. I really am. Anika, when someone is riddled with entities, can we intend on the wings to talk, be with them continuously? So you can anchor that column of light into a person's field. So when you anchor that column of light into that person's field, basically you are just, uh, you just go through that whole process of anchoring that columns of light with the on the wings of talk. But then you are also intending that you are working with that person and asking their soul to carry that energy in that field. Cause it's, it's, it's the soul that is the one who's going to carry that field. That's going to, um, hold it in place with its attention. So yes, you can totally anchor a column of light into a person, um, or a car or anything like that. Um, but if you're working with a person, you just work with their soul and ask their soul because their soul is the one that's going to determine whether that is in their highest and best or not. Um, let's see. Would this work to remove allergy on the edge of a small lake? Hard to say. Um, <clears throat> you know, working with, with the environment, it's, it's a different thing because basically all the tensor fields are going to hold space for whatever's in the highest and best. Um, so when you use the, the tools or the columns of light or your intentions or anything, we always do it from the heart space and we always have the intention that it is done in the highest and best. Um, because we, we try to not be the, the judge of what is in the highest and best because we do not have the perspective to be the judge to determine what is in the highest and best. So, you know, especially when we're working with nature, um, you know, it's, but that's kind of my personal thing too, that I know that I can, we have the tools and the consciousness and the ability to create rain, but yet I still always am very mm, reserved on, on doing so because, um, I'm still kind of trying to figure that one out myself on what is my role that I can play within this physical reality, working with nature and working with the environment. Um, so, you know, the more tuned in you are with the environment and with nature, with Gaia, with, you know, with your lake, with your, um, all the beings that reside there, the more in tune you are there, um, you know, the, the, I feel the more you can, the more work you can do um, because you're tuned in, you're in the heart and you're just holding that space. Sorry, I didn't really kind of went off on a different tangent there with that. Um, have you ever thought of making posters of the items, maybe infused with crystals like the t-shirts that could bring the tools energy to a place they're hanging in? You know, yeah, Mika, when we used to make our catalogs, we used to make full color catalogs. We would have people, um, you know, master feng, feng shui um, artists and, and, and all kinds of people who would use the catalogs um, because they anchor in that energetics. And so they would use the catalogs and just sit it in places. And, you know, people in radionics, they would put a catalog underneath the radionics machine just to broadcast the energetics. Um, so we were actually going to make a calendar for this last year, and we just did not get it done in time but yeah it's it is our intention to to create something like that maybe not the posters but you know a calendar would be super cool but yes you can totally anchor in the energetics of the tools into the photos that's like on the website is that there's the photos of the tools on the website which you can anchor the energetics into um all right. So I tell you what, I'm going to make a couple of quick announcements here and then we will jump into um, 
a quick meditation attunement to a new tool. And um, yeah, we'll call it a day, I guess. So, okay. This little thing right here, it's called the Triquatra. It's the three Vesca Pisces. Um, right here. This is the one that's coming out maybe this weekend, maybe next week. This is the Alchemist set. The rings are about 22 inches. You can do some amazing, amazing things with this, um, the way these are interweaved. So we've been having this sitting in the studio and we just have it setting up like this into a spherical form and it just sits there. Um, so that's a fun way to use it is in the spherical form, just in a single ring, or you can expand it out. When you expand it out, basically you are creating multiple fields here because you'll have, you know, like, um, I'm not sure which one is which right here and we don't distinguish them, but we have a divine I am, an alchemist and a harmonizer. And so those energies will be here. But then in this Vesca Pisces, we'll have like the alchemist and the harmonizer or the um, divine I am and the harmonizer together within this field. You know, in this field here, we'd have like maybe the, the harmonizer and the chalice together, whatever, you know, in this little field. But then they're all brought into that wisdom field right here in the intersection. Or when they're all together, that is the wisdom field as well. Um, so there's something pretty special about these we haven't done much with readings or anything on these yet but there's there's some pretty special energetics that come through here on these um so anyway this i believe we're gonna call it the alchemist halo not sure yet but this 26 inch set of rings is going to be available here probably next week so Anyway, it's kind of like having a practitioner set all in one. So that's that's one announcement that I wanted to show is um, for one of the possible new tools that, well, that one's going to be coming out for sure. So let's see. Um, then the other thing is the quantum heart. So this coil, it's a wisdom coil. In the center is a copper tube. And that copper tube is holding that energetics of the golden fire. So basically with this little coil pendant, um, it's kind of like the wisdom wand in that it is putting this um, cocoon around you. And it, it's, it's like this fibrous cocoon that comes in around you. And then there is a, um, in the center of that is just that bright light of you. And within the bright light of you within this coil, and then there's that cocoon on the outside within this space, it is holding the energetics of the clearing of soul aspects. It's holding the energetics of, of the clearing of all lifetimes of experience to change it into wisdom. It's kind of like the wisdom wand where the wisdom wand, it just holds that beautiful space and allows the things to happen. We're trying to push it even farther with this particular little tool here to allow for the work to take place a lot more easier and instantly and keeping you in that little field, that little bubble. Um, so we'll just do a meditation with this today. Um, and then as soon as we do have these out, these will be out in both um, copper and silver and um, they'll probably be out by the end of next week. And then these will be part of our new energetic transformation kits that we have that we'll be releasing also here by the end of the month. The new energetic transformation kits are going to be um, pretty much like our traditional, but we're going to be replacing that golden fire coil with this particular piece here. So if any of you really love the golden fire coil, this is very similar 
um, in its energetics and in its um, comfort that it holds you in, um, in that space of peace. But this is such a higher field than that golden fire coil. Um, so anyway, we'll go ahead and do a quick meditation. And basically, we'll just um, I'll hold the space. And we're going to attune in to this particular coil and those energetics. And let's um, hang it right up here. just to use as a prop, as a tool of your attention. Okay, here we go. So just closing your eyes, going to your physical heart, taking that breath from the earth, taking that breath from creation, Becoming that column of light that is grounded and connected and you're in the heart space. Imagining being in the heart space and this light, your light just begins to grow. Your light just becomes more bright, more potent, more denseness of light within you. And there is this fibrous, beautiful cocoon that is just around you. At, and it acts like a filter. So as we align ourselves, we bring in more of our light. That is our intention. As we are in the heart, we invite our soul in. We invite our soul's light in. And we just allow our soul to come into this safe, sacred space within you in the here and now moment. As your soul comes into this safe, sacred space, it is drawing in everything that your soul is, all the experiences, all the traumas, the dramas, all the beautiful things, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful. It is bringing everything in, in the form of light, in the form of wisdom. Your light, your consciousness, your soul is your wisdom. So you are just bringing everything into this safe, sacred space. Within this safe, sacred space, you are untouchable. You are untaintable. You are pure in the purest form of consciousness. All those lifetimes of crap do not come into this space. They come into this space, but they come in as wisdom, as your light. Beautiful. So just ask your soul to be with you in this manner, in every moment that your light is in every cell of your body, in between every cell. And it flows out into your moment, your moment of creation, here and now. That your soul's light stays in that moment, every moment of your creation. That it just harmonizes, integrates, dissolves and diffuses. And it creates. All right. We're just going to stay right here in this space for as long as you need. Wonderful. Okay. Enjoy that space. And perhaps we'll see you here next week. All right. Have a great week, everybody. Take care. Thank you for being here.